Hello, teacher. Hey, how are you doing? I'm great. New yeah. Year's. Yeah, New Year's is coming. Yeah, I made a resolution. Really? What is it? I was going to read more. Read more what? Well, I turned on the subtitles on my TV. Hmm. Well, that is reading, but I would suggest maybe a book. How about the Bible? Yeah, I read that. Okay. Let's read the Bible more so we'll know our Bible stories, right? Yes, I'm on top of the Bible stories. And speaking of Bible stories, Michael, do you remember last week's Bible story? I just started reading. Last week's Bible story, the one we study here. Oh yeah, it's about Jesus. Yes, it has been about Jesus, but it's also about three... Really smart dudes. Yeah, wise men. Very good, Michael. It's about three very smart men. And what did they do in our story? I don't know. Looked like they just rode around on a camel. Well, they rode their camels because they saw the star, right, that was going to lead them to the Savior of the world, right? Yep. Yeah. So they followed the star, and they went and saw the king at the time. Do you remember what his name was? Uh, it was kind of sounded like that herald angel. Uh, That's not it, though. Uh, it's close. Wait, 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 wait. Um, Herod. Herod, very good. He's was, bad. Okay, I was going to ask you, was he good or bad? No, he's was bad. He bad, that's right. Yeah, he did he, bad things. He did not like the idea of another king, did he? No. No. I don't think his mama even liked him. Well, I don't know about that, but he wasn't a nice guy, was he? Herod was bad. Yeah, he wanted this new king dead, right? Because he didn't want somebody who could take his place. So, the wise men were visited, right? Yeah, in a dream, and they were told not to go back to King Herod, right? Right. Not to go back to him after they had found the baby, actually the boy, Jesus, because he had grown some, right? By this time. So, these three wise men, they did not go back and tell him where the baby was because of this. And also, Mary and Joseph they ended up leaving, right? Where they yeah, had... yeah, yeah. An angel said, you need to go. Yeah, you need to get out of here, right? Because King Herod is going to try to kill the child, right? Yep. Okay. So, Time to get out. Yeah. So that was the conclusion. The no, wait, wait, wait. And then they went to Egypt and they built a pyramid. Well, I don't know about the whole building the pyramid thing, but they did go to Egypt. Very good, Michael. I'm glad you remembered the end of our story. Yeah, so, I was paying attention. That was the end of our study of the birth of Jesus, right? So now, Michael, we are going to go back to where we were at before we started the Christmas story, okay? That was a long time ago. Yeah, that was a while back. And we ended with Jesus stills the storm. So he calms the storm, right? You might kind of remember that story about how Jesus told the winds and everything to just peace be still, right? He told everything to calm down. The people in the boat were scared. Well, once they got off of this boat, that's where our story begins today, okay? So... As Jesus and his friends left their boat and stepped ashore, they noticed a great crowd of people were there to welcome him. Some were pushing to get nearer to Jesus. One man seemed terribly upset and in a great hurry. So, we have Jesus who got off of the boat, right? Yep. With the disciples, he gets off, 
and he's going amongst the people talking to them. Well, as he's walking along and talking to the people, to the crowds, there is a man that is pushing his way through, okay? As nicely as he can, but he's really concerned. He's worried about someone, okay, Michael? And what he's doing is he's trying to get through all of these people. They're all talking. They can oh just way. barely see Jesus. And he finally gets there and he turns to Jesus and he begins to tell him what is wrong why he is in such a hurry to talk to Jesus. Everyone recognized this man. His name was Jairus, the president of the synagogue. When he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet and he cried, you must come right away. My daughter is dying. I know you can make her well. Jesus felt so sorry for this man. He knew how much this man must love his little girl. I will go with you, he told Jairus. And at once, Jesus followed the man to his house. But it was hard to go fast. Everyone wanted to be near Jesus and crowded around him. So they start, oh, uh-oh, there went my glasses. Sorry about that, kids. All right, so as they are hurrying along to Jarius's house to take care of his daughter. Something else happens, okay? Suddenly, Jesus stopped and he asked, who touched me? Peter, his disciple, asked, why would you ask such a question? But Jesus told him, no, it was someone who touched me on purpose. I felt my healing power leave me, Jesus said. Then the frightened woman who had been healed fell at his feet and told him what had happened to her. So they're traveling along, they are on their way to Jairus' house. And a woman has touched the very hem of his clothing, his garment. She has also been trying to get to Jesus. And when she does, all she does is touch the hem of his garment. And then frightened, the woman who had been healed fell at his feet and told him what had happened to her. All she did was touch the very end of his garment and she was healed, Michael. All this time I have gone from one doctor to another and not one of them could help me. I knew if I just touched you, I could be well, she said. Jesus looked at the happy face of the lady who had been sick for 12 years and now was well. Daughter, he said, your faith has made you well. Go in peace healed of the disease that you had. Jarius wished that Jesus would hurry. Maybe his little girl was already gone. While Jesus was still talking to the woman, messengers arrived from Jarius' home. So as they were traveling still to get to Jarius' house, some messengers from his house came quickly to meet them. It's too late. There's no point in Jesus coming now, they said. The little girl has already died. Oh, poor oh, Jerry. No! I know. He had tried so hard to have Jesus come in time to heal his daughter. Perhaps he thought if this is a horrible story. Uh, well, wait, wait, we're not done. Perhaps he thought if only Jesus hadn't stopped to talk to that woman. Jarius was beside himself with grief and sorrow, crying. Jesus said very simply to Jarius, don't be afraid. Just trust me. 
Then Jesus told the crowd to stand back. He didn't want anyone to go into the home except Peter, James, and John, and the father and mother of the little girl. What's all this confusion and noise about, Jesus asked the crowd. The little girl is only sleeping. The people laughed at him. They knew she was dead. Didn't Jesus know when someone was dead? When Jesus went into the room where the little girl was lying. So he went in with only his disciples and the mother and father, right? When he got there, Jesus went over to the bed where the sweet little girl was lying. And you know what he did? What did he, he do? He took her hand and he said, get up, little girl. And just like that, she jumped up and walked around. So wow. up she came. Jesus grabs her hand. She gets up and she begins to walk around the room. Her parents were so amazed they couldn't even speak or move. Give her something to eat, said Jesus. When the parents realized their daughter was well, Jarius, I am sure, hugged his daughter. Her mother hugged her too, and then she ran to go get her something to eat. Jesus loved to do happy things for people. But he had to leave quickly because there was so much more work to do. The age of miracles has not passed. Jesus can do everything abundantly above all that we ask if we only have faith and believe. So very simply, Michael, Jesus has not quit doing these miracles today. He still performs miracles, doesn't he? Yep. Yes, he still heals people. He has done it so many times over and over again. There's even been people that have seen what heaven looks like and then come back from that. So we know that Jesus still raises people from the dead and that Jesus still heals people because we hear about miraculous healings all the time. And it could be, it's been, it could have been your parents that have had this happen to them. It could be grandparents. It could be friends. There are so many people that we may know that Jesus has healed today, just like he did back then, right? Yep. Yeah. So You know we, my favorite part? What? After she was healed, uh -huh. she ate. Yeah, that is good, isn't it? She was hungry. Just like we are a lot of times, right, Michael? All the time. Yeah, I know. You're at an age where you are hungry all the time. And we have been doing a lot of eating. A lot of us have, haven't we? Because of the holidays, because of Christmas, Thanksgiving, and now we got New Year's coming up. And I hope everybody has a wonderful New Year's. And I hope that you'll come back next week all ready to hear the next lesson that Jesus has for us in our Bibles. And don't forget your memory verse, which I'm going to change next week, okay? I've been lingering along letting you guys learn this really simple verse, but I know we need to change it out next week, okay? Oh, I know it. What is it? For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Luke eleven thirty seven. Oh, you're close. Luke one thirty seven. Oh, oh wow! I thought I had it. The really important thing is you did remember the verse. You didn't remember exactly where it was in your Bible, but you remembered the verse. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Just like our story today, right? All right. Thank you, boys and girls. See you next week. Goodbye. Thank